Orchid, broken pot, new root growth, and action. Thank you so much for being here. It's Dendrobium Tortilla Repot time. It's a beautiful sunny day in southern Spain. This orchid has been in my collection since 2018. She's been through quite a lot. She's been divided, etc. But now it's also time to repot her. Not only because the pot is broken, but she is top heavy because of her leaning tendency and her direction of growth, which I'm training into one direction. So the more canes she's getting, yep, the heavier she's getting. And I am afraid she's going to topple over one day. Many reasons that this orchid needs to be repotted. So in the preliminary stages, first thing I soaked this orchid in CalMag and seaweed. I took a hundred parts per million of calcium and magnesium because she's huge and she's growing five new growths. And I took 60 parts per million of seaweed. And that was a pH of 6.8 because it's a blitz soak. She's been in this pot for an hour. What I've tried to do <laughs> to the best of my ability was dislodge what I can see as roots attached to the side of the pot in the hopes that we will be able to take them and bring them over intact to the new pot. That's the goal. I've also removed any loose lecker that I could find to remove them from the root tips that are growing on the five new growths that I have on this orchid. Unfortunately, I don't have six new growths. I always get five new growths. It would be nice if one year she would give us six new growths, but anyway, I've also done a little bit of alcohol treatment and maintenance because there were some mealybugs in here because that is what this orchid attracts is mealybugs, especially on the luscious new growth. So I've done some alcohol treatment. I may need to repeat that when we're done. But first of all, I'm going to change the angle and try and get her out of the pot. The pot is extremely brittle on the rim, just snaps off. And so no bueno, but let's do our best and see what we can salvage root tips and all. So <laughs> here goes. I had her mounted for the first two years she was in my collection. And of course, this is, oh, she just loved it. It's the perfect setup to grow this orchid mounted because of her pendant growth habit. Watch the roots grow on the mount, etc. But oh, I have to tell you, in my very dry climate, I was getting a little bit sus about the fact that she is so vigorous and that I would have problems long term in keeping up with her watering because her new growths are tender and I need to do a lot of misting to keep up with it. So now I could say, well, why don't I mount her again? I've got these gorgeous pieces of cork and now space is an issue <laughs> because a lot of orchids have been upgraded to bigger mounts. So we have a little bit of a space issue, but she's been doing well in Lekka and self watering. So it's not like the setup is the problem. It's more, it's just such a beautiful orchid to grow on a mount. Anyway, she's pot bound. That's great. The pot is rock hard. So let's be very careful. And we're gonna get the hammer out. I'm keeping an eye on the root tips. There's new roots also growing right inside already branching and everything. That's great. At least we have a branching root system that makes it very forgiving for any damage we're going to be doing because we are doing damage, C or C, no matter how gentle, no matter nothing. This bashing of a pot or even gently squeezing, in my opinion, we can be as gentle as possible as we can be when it comes to squeezing a pot. What we're doing is putting media against roots and that smushes them. So as much as I like to say, be careful, be gentle, I prefer to say, make sure you've got roots growing because that means that whatever damage you're going to do is going to be a little bit less impactful on the orchid 
simply because new roots are coming. I'm just seeing more mealy bugs. Yeah, we'll do a treatment afterwards. Sorry if I'm getting distracted. I'm a little bit apprehensive about this. If you're saying, why don't you cut the pot? Good question. I've got a stake here. I don't know how to set the pot down. I mean, the rim breaks e easily, but what was always inside the pot does not. Also, I don't know what roots are circling around here. So just get my stuff out of the way. I'm normally set up with everything around me, but these long canes, <laughs> they're snagging on everything. But she is loose. Probably what's going to be holding her back now is just the microfiber. Ah, there's a gorgeous root right there by the leka. I hope you can see that. It's a little bit bright out here. But I wanted to come here to the east patio so the canes don't go up against the hedge. Maybe if we take the support off, not get our head of ourselves. Staying focused, stay concentrated. I'm just excited to get into this orchid, to be honest with you. And it's been a while since I've done a proper cleanup. So everything is kicking off in my brain like, yay, the sun is out and it's high noon for this one. Now, pulling this orchid is also going to be a little bit complicated because she doesn't have thick canes at the base. So it's not like I can just go all ninja into her. I've got to be a little bit more careful with where I'm going, what I'm doing. But it's so nice that you're here. Thank you so much. Consider liking the video. That would be awesome. That really helps out. I appreciate every bit of that, as well as subscribing to the channel if you haven't subscribed yet. Oh my goodness, that is also so appreciated. And if you think that this could benefit anybody, please share the video. I know it's early days. We've only just begun. We've only just begun. But A for effort, no? Right. New growth, new growth, old canes, old canes. I'm trying to see where I can find a grip that I can pull or try to pull without grabbing the new growths. And without breaking the canes that I would like to see bloom next year. Okay. Gonna be a little bit more bold got a good grip on some very old canes now. Let's go. I'm happy that she's a branching root system. <laughs> That's even more forgiving. You know you want to. Oh, here she comes. Oh, I'm liking what I'm seeing. I'm liking what I'm seeing. Fantastic! And all that fun stuff. We did it. Oh my goodness. Let me get you in a little bit closer. How is that for a beautiful sight? The decision has been made to put her into a larger pot, obviously. But I was expecting a lot more root ball cleanup. So this is wonderful because we don't have to. All we are going to do is shake her out. Whatever loose leka comes out is going to be our source of aeration. If the roots had been more dead, I would be in there doing a great little cleanup. But there is no need. No need. Look at this. This is awesome. Fantastic. Let me get my tag out which is attached to a root, a viable root. So we'll get rid of that. Release it. And then we'll just give her a little bit of a massage and shake. Whatever loose lecker falls out, falls out.
Now, by no means am I anticipating that all these roots will stay viable. I hope they will. But because of the hammer, you know, we've done some damage. We've bruised some velamen. But we have a lot, a lot of good stuff going on here. You could consider this being sort of an up pot. Seeing as I'm not really drastically going in and cleaning up. If I see something, I will remove it, of course. So these roots here are dead, but not all of them, because even though they look dry and papery, no, there's substance to them as well. I have a little bit of a system here that I can take off. So that's all right, but really, honestly. <laughs> is awesome. These are the kind of repots that I thoroughly, thoroughly enjoy. No wind, beautiful sunny day, and a fantastic, fantastic specimen of an orchid that just rock and roll in the setup that I chose for it. Very pleased. Ooh, a mealy bug. Once upon a time, there was a mealybug on my tortile. Was being the keyword. Where there's one, there's more, but I'm not going to address those at this moment. What we're going to do now is just pot her up. Because she was getting top heavy and I was afraid of her falling over, I put the only thing at the time that I had available, glass beads, into the reservoir. This was just to keep the pot heavy when in winter I needed her to keep her a little bit drier. I wasn't filling the reservoir and doing all that stuff during the winter, even though Lekka and self-watering doesn't make the roots go dry. I don't have water in the reservoirs and I needed the weight. But these are patético, so you can still see the remnants of my soak, the back to fill product I'm testing. Because this orchid did come from a dubious shipment. So anything that tells me is a preventative for Fusarium after a stressful repot, <laughs> we are doing the back to fill and see how that goes. Now, I still do want to wire her to a stake. I want to maintain that, but maybe that's not necessary because she has such a fantastic root system. So what we're going to do instead, get the orchid, place her in, yeah, just as I thought. I wanted to put lava rock into the bottom of the pot because for another two years, this orchid needs to stay there. But if I put lava rock in the pot, she is gonna be up here and I don't want that. This is not what I had in mind but I'm not going to do semi-hydro with her because of the shelf that she lives on. But after a bit of rummaging around in the shed, I found this option here. Now, I'm going to eventually block off the semi-hydro holes, but for the purposes of the video, I'm not going to be doing that here and now. This at least fits. The pot looks ridiculous, but it's going to serve the purpose that I need it to. It has to be heavy enough so that the orchid won't topple over and I can put lava rock at the base. Which means a different plan of attack with the microfibers. We're not doing loops. They have a long distance to cover. So we're just going to keep them in a strand like that. Now, I only have two, but that's okay. I'm not getting a third one, seeing as I'm going to be using small leka. This orchid has fine roots, she's vigorous. So what we're going to do is get the lava rock, put it at the base. I've got large, large pieces of lava rock. And I'm thinking that I'm already going to wedge my stake in. I can't put it into the holes because that's not solid. It's also much shorter than what it was in a smaller pot. It would have been ideal. I'm going to put that there so at least I know I've hit all the way down. Now just to ensure that I don't lose my microfibers.
if nothing else, this is going to make the pot nice and solid. Now, of course, if you've watched videos of mine in the past, you'll think, oh, lava rock and root damage. You know how I love lava rock as a media, but the root damage when it comes to repotting is exponential. Yeah, we'll cross that bridge when we get there. Knowing that the root system is a branching root system, five new growths. If I ever manage to get this orchid to grow more new growths than five, that means there's an active root system already in the pot, plus new roots coming. If we do damage after repotting using the lava rock at the base, then at least we've got backup. So I hope I didn't over pour there. Just want to make sure that my <laughs> microfiber doesn't disappear. I need that with the height of the pot now. <laughs> okay, let's get the orchid and see what level we're up against now. Keeping in mind the direction of growth, keeping in mind my canes are long and they'll be coming this way because this is the counter support. So we're going to turn the pot this way, pot her up with the flow of her growth going that way. <laughs> not up against the tripod, trying to keep the jiggle to a minimum. Now this one I do want as far back as possible. And we need to turn her just a tad. If we can get long roots into the pot, bonus! That'll work for me, but it has to work for the orchid. That means I need to get a tie straight away. Now, while the stake may appear to be loose when we put the leka in, it's gonna have more of a grip as well. I'm watching a root tip that is right down here. I'm sorry if you can't see that, but this appears to be a straightforward procedure with eyes going everywhere. Just keeping an eye on everything possible. Now I want to grab as many canes as I possibly can because they are, as mentioned, fine at the base. So we're going to need a lot of them. That only just took about 20 minutes in real time. <laughs> Turns out it was a very important step and we're still not done yet. Yeah, I don't want to be repotting this orchid anytime soon. <laughs> While it all looked so wonderful when we got her out of the pot, this is a nightmare. But again, I'm in the sunshine and you're here. Thank you so much. Now, I don't have a third hand, but I want the orchid in this position. So before I put water in there and make everything more buoyant, I'm going to get my third hand. I'm going to fill Lekka right into the gap right here, which I hope is visible right here, because with that, I'm going to have her in the position I want. That'll do. Look, Mom, no hands. <laughs> That's my third hand in place. Now let's get some water in there. And we'll see if the reservoir at the base is gonna help us with any kind of buoyancy. Of course not. Where there's a will, there's a way. I'm just gonna plug those holes a little bit rudimentary at the moment until I get my waterproof silicon out. In case you are wondering how I was gonna plug those holes permanently, I use water resistant silicon for the bathrooms, <laughs> preferably in white. Now, where were we? <laughs> water. <laughs> I'll fill her up now. Bit by bit, not all at once. I don't want like a gridlock in that pot now.
All right, let's see what we've done. Ta-da! Maybe I shall do duct tape inside as opposed to what I was thinking with the silicon. I only need a tiny bit of silicon and it's just ridiculous to buy a whole tube of it. <laughs> we'll see. Maybe a duct tape inside is going to be the way we're going to go. But for now, I would say this is a job well done, if I may say so myself. All right, now that we've done that, let's give her another little bit of a brush down. Because where she's going, she'll be there for another couple of months, if not two or three years. I only ever occasionally take this orchid down to flush, etc. She's up on that one spot in the blooming alley where she lives, whether she's in bloom or not. Seems to love it, grows well, has plenty of light, gets direct sun during the winter because of the angle of the sun. So I'm not changing her location. But what I can do now is totally remove the wire because this pot is good and heavy. And I will duct tape those holes because I don't want anything dripping down onto orchids below the shelf. That is not going to happen. You never know where that might land and what problems can occur because of not realizing that there's droplets going into another orchid's crown at an unopportune time. Her direction of growth has been re-established. The stake is back where it should be. The holes at the moment are back there so that I can keep an eye on what I'm doing until I duct tape that area, which will probably happen later today. For now, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. I appreciate your time. I wish you a fabulous day on that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care, bye.